Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Silberstein, the e-commerce editor at Retail Touchpoints, and I'm very much looking forward to today's Retail Think Tank webinar about getting a jumpstart on holiday marketing. I know it's only July, but those of you on with us today know how early holidays kick off in retail. So very happy to have you here today. Before we dig in though, there are just a few housekeeping items to go through. First and foremost, for those of you who may be new to Retail Touchpoints, welcome. When the session's over, I encourage you to join our community. You can follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn, and of course, check out our great assortment of content and resources, which includes everything from breaking news and trend pieces to detailed research, podcasts, and more webinars like this. To make things a bit easier, you can subscribe to our newsletter, which goes out twice a week. Today's webinar is part of our Retail Think Tank Hub, where you can explore what's next for the industry and discover new opportunities your organization can capitalize on. We'll be featuring exclusive content, interviews, and insights all summer long. And because you signed up for this webinar, you have access to all the Think Tank content, which we'll be adding to weekly. So be sure to keep visiting the hub. And keep an eye out for our Think Tank newsletter, which outlines all the latest and greatest hub content. Now just a few final things to call out to ensure that you have a great experience on today's webinar. Right now you should be seeing the main ON24 dashboard. You can submit your questions and we'll get to as many of those as we can at the end of the presentation. You can also download additional resources courtesy of our sponsor Mountain. And perhaps most important of all is that you can share your feedback on today's webinar using the widget at the bottom of your screen. Please do take a moment to tell us what you think so that we can improve our future events. If you have any follow-up questions or need help with your experience at any time, just press the help icon to get further guidance. And now a little bit about today's speakers. Maggie Pendergrass is an agency success manager at Mountain where she collaborates with brands and agencies to develop evidence-based strategies and testing approaches to grow their reach and revenue. With experience on both sides prior to her time at Mountain, Maggie has a passion for building relationships with her clients and understanding their long-term goals to build strategies at scale. Offline, she lives in coastal North Carolina with her family, including her five-year-old rescue dog, Sylvie. Brooke Weller is SVP of Media and Analytics at REQ, an agile company. Brooke oversees the sizable digital team operations to effectively deliver a seamless, unbridled client experience across all channels. She works closely with REQ's media leads to relentlessly pursue client performance improvements through strategic business recommendations, concrete activation planning, and data-driven optimizations. Prior to joining REQ, Brooke spent more than a decade supporting large-scale global media planning and execution programs at performance marketing agencies, iProspect and Neil Patel Digital, where she managed Fortune 500 brands, including Adobe, Apple, Intel, Xbox, and Levi's. She plays in a women's soccer league every Sunday. And now I'm gonna pass things over to Maggie to get us started with today's webinar. Awesome, thank you so much, Nicole. It's a pleasure to be here and we're excited to get started. Uh, first, we're gonna go through our key takeaway for today, which is gonna be that holiday shopping is starting earlier than ever and retailers need to prepare their full funnel media mixes now. So what are we gonna cover today? Today's agenda covers the rise of early holiday shopping and what it means for marketers across the board, website and landing page strategies that we recommend as we go into the holiday season and how to apply a full funnel marketing approach to your marketing efforts. We also go over how CTV, Connected TV, complements existing holiday strategies and campaigns and go into detail on that for you as well. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Brooke to kick things off and get us started. Thanks, Maggie. Um, also, Nicole, uh, our bios were such a mouthful, um, but generally speaking, Maggie and I have been in the trenches with clients through their cyber events, um, cyber weekends, holiday planning for years and years. So we're going to basically go through all these different tips and tricks to make sure that your holiday planning is successful and executed flawlessly. Um, so. Let's take a look at what's happening in the consumer trend side of things. Essentially, um, you all know people are shop you're all consumers, right? So we're all shopping earlier and earlier these days. Um, as soon as October, actually, um, and if we're thinking about back to school, I, I have 
also heard that people, when they're back to school shopping, are starting to think about holiday deals already. Um, Amazon Prime Day is strategically placed in July, but there's also another one um, in September. And so this is really gearing towards those early shoppers. We're also seeing 83% uh, of shopping actually starting before Thanksgiving. And we're not just talking about putting into the cart, abandoning carts, which is happening a little bit around that time, but actually making the purchase all the way through to adoption and therefore um, becoming customers. Uh, additionally, what we are seeing, this is kind of a, um, a rebound since COVID. 85% um, of consumers will actually shop in-store. And some of those COVID benefits like um, in-store pickup and you know order online and, and you get it in the parking lot, those are actually still patterns that we're seeing and behaviors we're seeing today. So let's take a look at what we wanna do ahead of time here in order to plan your flawless execution during that cyber event. When I say cyber event, I mean um, that's Black, that's Thanksgiving, Black Friday, all the way to through Small Business Saturday, and then um, Cyber Monday as well. So those, that's what we say when we mean cyber event. Um, so cyber event 2024 is coming fast. Um, we do recommend that you start as soon as August. And we're going to go through a lot of tips and tricks like promotions. Maybe you can um, recommend uh, some sort of back to school promotion with an additional coupon they could use during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, and then you also want to make sure that you're launching things this early because you need all of that data. Um, you need to understand the audience um, behavior. You need to understand um, what's happening on your website so that you can improve upon things from a conversion rate optimization standpoint as early as now until you're actual getting really close in November. Um, additionally, that full funnel awareness. So we, we see awareness happening this early. You need your brand to be known because when people go to start looking down the getting their wish list and their shopping lists together, that's not going to be a time for brand awareness. That's going to be, you need to be in their consideration set um, and you need to be right there ready for them with that promo um, during the cyber event. So we do recommend um, uh, adding in CTV, upper funnel activity. This is also when you're going to do some of your channel testing in September and October because you don't know exactly uh, where your audience is going to be. You don't know where they're going to see your ads and what's going to convert. So you're, you're going to be doing a little bit of testing during this full funnel period through October, September and October. Um, starting November 1st, you know, start a promotion, get your audience really warm, really hot all the way through November. Um, several of our clients, we launch uh, countdown ads, um, almost like one of those uh, uh, nativity like uh you know countdown to christmas type effects but you're going to want to do like a promotion every day uh within november and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in ahead here um and then you're going to see your peak sales dates so the dates change every year all of the cyber event dates this year are going to be in november nothing's going to bleed over to december as far as the peak dates go and so that's when you're going to hit hard we're going to talk about how much budget you should put along uh, all of these different stages. And then after the cyber event, after Cyber Monday, there's still an opportunity for a lot of sales while people are shopping for those holiday gifts. Um, last minute shopping, you're going to want to think about your shipping cutoff dates. Um, but generally speaking, we like to see a lot of email marketing go out with holiday gift guides, um, last minute shopping uh, ideas tons of bundles. You can also start selling your gift cards if you have gift cards online, which we also recommend. So some of the budget breakdown is really important here as well. Awesome. Thanks, Brooke. I definitely agree with you on a number of those. I've seen a number of advertisers who have those evergreen strategies, and I'm sure you see the same with your brands where brands that have been live all year round start really using that July to September timeframe to some, test some of those audiences, especially those new products that may have come out in maybe Q2, early Q3. 
they're starting to kind of test, see how far they can push to really start building up those retargeting audiences or lower funnel efforts for late uh, November. And so happy to kind of talk through some of the budget recommendations that we would recommend around that. Um, to start with that evergreen lead in um, for your holiday campaign launches, it's really going to help bolster that performance during that time frame, especially for e-commerce and for retail. This is going to help widen the audience pool early. So once you hit launch on those lower funnel holiday campaigns, they're already going to those consumers are already going to be in the kind of consideration set for purchase. We actually saw with a leading e-commerce retailer, Rumple, adopt this approach and increase their return on ad spend by 15% and increase their revenue by 39% um, during this holiday timeframe. So this is kind of the perfect time to be running um, some of these evergreen heavy ups. So what we're gonna recommend is to set aside about 60 to 90% of your budget for your prospecting or upper funnel campaigns and start them about three to six weeks out from Black Friday at kind of the, the latest. We definitely recommend the earlier you start, the more momentum you're gonna get. So don't wait until November to really start these. Start as early as October to allow time for setup, testing, campaign optimization, and to generate that larger site visitor pool. The remaining 10 to 40% of that overall campaign budget can go towards your retargeting or lower funnel efforts. Um, which should be launched around the same time. And then you'll slowly begin to kind of switch those efforts and switch those budgets um, and start shifting as we get closer and closer to the holidays. So great example here for November 1st through the 20th, we're gonna be spending about 60% of that November budget. And then the remaining 40% is gonna be kind of closer to that cyber and, and um, cyber week event. Um, and then from December 1st to the 23rd, we're going to be spending about 90% of that budget. And we're still holding on to about 10% of that budget for that kind of final push on gift cards. If you have products that are you know, typically kind of the treat yourself products in the new year, definitely make sure maybe you want to spend a little bit closer to 20 or 30% as well, um, kind of going into the new year, new you momentum if you're doing any sort of fitness based um, products or e-commerce. Yeah, and I'll definitely add here um, that you should def you should not do the inverse of this. Um, this is a, a big fail that I've seen a lot of e-commerce brands do. They save 90% of that budget for just those five days where all the consumers are online. Um, yes, you may squeeze out a lot of ROAS, a lot of revenue, um, but again, you could triple that amount if you are warming up the audience in early November. Additionally, I would say be ready to be really agile. Be ready to, if you're seeing the highest success that you've seen from an e-com perspective or revenue perspective, and you've out, outshined your goals already, be ready to pull some of that December budget from the first you know, couple weeks of December and pull that into November. So definitely stay agile, um, but don't leave any gaps in the budget pacing across these two months. It's really pivotal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't don't necessarily allow um, your kind of pre-planning to, to hold you to it. I definitely think that remaining agile is, especially nowadays, that's going to be key to, to finding success there. Absolutely. So uh, we, we are going to throw a lot at you. We're trying to go through every single thing needed in order to be successful through this holiday planning season. Um, but really want to focus a bit on landing page development. And the reason being is that, you know, there's a lot of pitfalls that you can get into um, while not having a very optimized landing page. Um, and when I say landing page, this could be your paid media landing page. This could differ um, between your product or your category pages on your website. But just be thinking of that uh, customer behavior and be monitoring how they're interacting with your pages ahead of your cyber event. Um, and like I have on these bullets, plan ahead for your cyber preparedness. But um, you really want to make sure that these pages are very, very clear and you need to do a lot of web testing. So I have seen um, this happen in the past where, you know, a company does some sort of big web update, like right before their holiday uh, spending season kicks in and their website is down um, or some widget on their website's not loading properly or they're seeing like really slow page load speeds, that can literally kill your entire uh, plan and that can really hurt your company from a revenue standpoint. 
um, and cause a lot of stress and panic. So another thing to think about from a landing page perspective, again, is that customer behavior. So what audience segmentation do you want to deploy on these landing pages or on your website? So ahead of planning, you want to make sure that those GA4 audiences are in your analytics tool, that all those segments are set up. And when I say segments, I mean, you know, someone who scrolls halfway down the page and then bounces, that could be a segment. You need to really understand what's happening on the website. Um, retargeting pixels, very, very important. Um, as Maggie talks more about CTV, having all of your partner channel pixels together and making sure that they're all firing in um, you're looking at attribution because you can create several amazing segments from one channel to another. And then, and again, making sure audience pixels are in place. So those are all things that you want to test ahead of time. Um, and then there's landing page best practices where you're really moving people down the funnel. One company that I think does this really well um, from a paid landing uh, page perspective is called um, BarkBox. They have all of the different, it's kind of a chewy competitor, but essentially they have all of these different dog toys, but their funnel for their landing page is really excellent. So take a look at that page um, and use some of those best practices. I can definitely attest to, to Bark Bo BarkBox's success as a dog owner. Uh, I definitely find myself uh, frequently in their funnel there. But to your point, I definitely think that now is the time to A-B test. Don't wait until November if you're going to test some new strategies or test how an audience responds to those landing page messages. Test it now. Um, couldn't agree with more with that. Yeah. And so here's a tiny, you know, mini checklist. There's larger checklists out there online. Obviously, check with your developers for their checklists. Um, but uh, I wanted to also mention, I mentioned some landing page issues, if the pages aren't loading, et cetera. Um, but really what you want to do for your, you know, 15 point checklist is you want to check everything. So let's, um, let's say you are using um, um, a coupon tool, for example, and you're also running um, Instagram ads. Well, there's an opportunity to push that coupon directly to your shop stores on meta ads and Instagram. Um, as well as TikTok. But what could happen, and I've seen this happen, which was really, really sad and scary and a big, a big mess, was that coupon that you launched on your website, that they launched on their website, actually duplicated the coupon. So instead of giving someone 40% off, which is a massive discount in itself, it actually duplicated for anyone that came through the site from um, Meta or Instagram, and it added 40% to 40%, giving customers 80% off. So yes, this client had the best cyber event from a volume standpoint ever known to man, and they were able to capture all those extra uh, new customers, but uh, it was not what they had in mind from an ROAS standpoint. So uh, it was fixed as soon as it was found, um, but again, that's really uh, something that could happen. Also, Check your website, check your landing page, make sure your product catalogs are set up correctly. Another horror story that I have seen happen, and I see this happen actually all the time, not just during the cyber event, but uh, the holiday season is much more pivotal to growth um, and success. So what I have seen is multiple catalogs within your web um, CMS actually going live on the various platforms. So test the connection between all of these apps and tools that are connected to your website. Because if that wrong catalog goes live and people are seeing the ad and clicking through, there's actually nothing within meta ads or TikTok that's going to prevent a catalog uh, image from showing. But when people click through it and that product's not available on your site or it's it links to a broken link, that's going to be really catastrophic as well. Um, and again, any bad customer journey that you may see happen. Have friends and family test your website, test it in a staging environment and really like hone in on that. That's where you're sending all of your um, new audience acquisition, all of that to that website. So make sure that it's set up properly.
Yeah, and just to, to comment on that as well, if you need people to, to take a look at your site and to look at your customer journey, lean on your channel partners, lean on kind of your wider team. Um, there are definitely gonna be some people out there, I, I work with brands every day where you know they get on calls with us and they say, let's take five minutes and just walk through this customer journey together um, to get fresh eyes on it. We work in the space too, we understand that uh, our jobs are not always easy this time of year. So we wanna make sure that we work together as a team to really make sure that we're lifting revenue overall. And that includes with other holiday prep plans, things that you may not have necessarily thought of. Um, we talked about audience segmentation strategy and targeting strategies, um, really focusing on making sure that across your marketing mix, you are building those strategies early, you're making sure that they're really cohesive and finding opportunities to link them together, as Brooke said. If you're building out those segments um, on one channel, chances are you could probably adopt similar strategies on another, if not kind of using the similar keywords or being able to adopt a similar testing strategy for each campaign. Um, use that pre-holiday -hol um, time to implement the best media mix model. Look at the differing attribution models, understand how you're gonna look at the data, not just during the holiday season, but also after it. How is this gonna inform your Q1, Q5 strategy? How are you gonna look at this next year? What data do you need next time that you need to, that you need to start collecting today? This is gonna be really important. We're setting up for long-term success, long-term growth. We don't wanna just focus on what tomorrow brings. We wanna be able to build, build quite a bit uh, better for next time. And then at the same time, you need to know what will or won't work ahead of the holidays. So start looking at data now of what you've been doing so far this year. You don't have the time to waste. None of us wanna be sitting at Thanksgiving dinner, as Brooke mentioned, getting that, that dreaded text message about a promo code gone wrong. Nobody wants to be in that situation when you're having to you know, step away from the dinner table. Um, so make sure that you're really getting ahead of those, uh, those preparations now. Definitely, Maggie. I'll also note that uh, if you do have an agency partner like REQ, uh, we always have a skeleton crew um, uh, fully available if anything were to go wrong. We have every uh, potential capability in-house to, to solve your problems. So you can sit at the Thanksgiving uh, dinner table and relax. But um, so when we mentioned planning ahead and understanding your audience, um, I wanted to also share a couple of tools that we use um, at REQ um, to actually save some of that time um, audience testing. Um, we use consumer behavior and social listening tools like Meltwater. Um, we also partner sometimes with Brandwatch, um, Muckrack. There's quite a few of them out there. Um, and what we do is we can take different uh, elements of either your audience, um, we can take your CRM list. Um, we can also take your competitors' audiences using this tool. We can pull all of your competitors' followers um, and we can put them into this tool. And the tool is gonna tell us a couple of things. It's gonna give us some topic analysis. It's gonna tell us what topics people are talking about around these competitor brands or around your brand or even around your product set. Um, and it's gonna tell us some little things like hey, you could talk about this or this is trending um, and you might wanna include that in your messaging. Um, and then additionally, we have this audience tool, which is my favorite, especially when we're doing a multimedia planning. So understanding the consumer, whether you pull your competitors uh, insights or your own or a blue skies audience that you've never targeted before and you have no idea about them, um, this is a great tool. It shows you um, behaviors. It tells you specifically what platforms they frequent and which um, platforms they're most likely to engage in. Um, it'll even tell you um, at a platform level how likely your, um, the audience on that platform is likely to share or purchase or um, comment on social media. So it's very insightful. We also use it for content planning. We use it for our media mix modeling. So if you can see um, on the screen share there, we have we, we could see down to the people's individual um, YouTube channels preferences. You can see um, specific uh, different streaming services. You can go all the way down to the podcast. So when you're thinking of a full funnel approach, now you just saved your time and you saved your time and money testing 
because now you know exactly which podcast to target, you know exactly which platforms to launch on. Um, and sometimes you can find really interesting things about these audiences that you maybe thought were correct and you were, um, you were, you were proven wrong, or you can find new audiences, um, like maybe that, maybe this tool tells you that your audience is actually, uh, um, like middle-aged mothers like myself. We've saw that we've seen that happen before. Um, and we've recommended to our client, Hey, maybe you should change your messaging. Maybe you should grab someone, uh, that kind of looks like your audience so that you can run some UGC. And we saw really great success for, with that. So I highly recommend that you go through this kind of strategy planning ahead of time so that, again, you can save yourselves um, a lot of testing different um, platforms. I love, Brooke, you noted about uh, the creative itself and being able to, to find uh, similar uh, people that look like the audience that is actually out there looking for your product or looking for those services. Um, instead of just kind of basing it off of, of assumption, we find that so frequently with our partners at QuickFrame where we're starting to brainstorm and the brand kind of has a certain idea of what they want to go after. They re, uh, reconnect with their team and then they realize, wait a second, there's a whole untapped market here that we've never made a commercial for um, or never you know, really spoke to. So I think that's such great insight. Yes. Uh, we mentioned some of these already. This is some more tips and tricks as far as planning goes. Um, looking at your website, CRO, do some uh, multivariant testing way ahead of time, starting now. Um, test different paths in GA4. If, if anybody wants a whole GA4 webinar done, I'm happy to do it. Um, and my team is in incredible with analytics. But, you know, you can create these consumer paths with the new reports in GA4. And you can see exactly where your customers are falling off in those paths. Um, we also recommend that you add heat mapping to your website, although do it correctly so you don't lose any um, site speed or functionality with the heavy, heavy JavaScript of a heat mapping tool. Um, but take a look to see where are people rage clicking. You know, those rage clicks where someone's just clicking on a button that doesn't actually go anywhere, um, all of those rage clicks turn into a cart abandonment. So if you can fix those things ahead of time, you'll just be in a great position going into um, these holiday peak days. Um, additionally, we mentioned uh, audience segments, um, any uh, kind of tips and tricks there. You can set them up based off of behavior. Um, and you know, Maggie and I were chatting prior to this um, webinar is that, you know, let's say you're running CTV and you're, get, you're going after tons and tons of new households, um, for example, and there you're seeing all these verified visits on your website. You can create a segment from the traffic coming from Mountain, and then you can pump that back into your TikTok ads or your meta ads or your Reddit ads, anything you want to do. You can leverage all these different channel activities and really um, come up with some amazing, uh, highly strategic remarketing strategies. Um, and then we'll go through new uh, UGC and, and ad formats here in a minute, but um, Cyber Weekend is not the time to be testing new ad formats. So you need to know what your audience is going to respond to. Um, you need to make sure that you under you know exactly what's work, what works and what doesn't work um, before you go ahead and launch those. So now is the time for testing. Um, and then, you know, all of these platforms additionally have really good content creator opportunities now. So again, there's really no excuse to not be running UGC in some way, shape or form. Um, the platforms are making it very easy for you. Um, and I will give a shout out to Scipio, one of our UGC content partners as well. Them. So looking at Q3, Q4, and then Q5, you've heard us mention it a couple of times looking ahead to that Q1, Q5 timeframe. Um, we like to call it Q5 because the momentum doesn't stop. Just because we hit December 25th, December 31st doesn't mean that suddenly we don't have quotas, we don't have revenue goals, we don't have kind of ambitions for 2025. Gift cold gift card holders are ready to spend and in-store foot traffic is going to return as people are returning gifts. Maybe they're out there looking for what they didn't get over the holiday season, or they're looking for those post-holiday sales, or 
they maybe want to upgrade the underwhelming gifts that they may have gotten from a distant cousin or something like that. But we always say that the best approach to is an evergreen approach. So keep your campaigns on to ensure that you're capitalizing on those learnings for the season and years to come and keeping that momentum going. Um, and with that, normally people make the assumption that your funnel is gonna shrink. You're gonna pivot into just pure um, bottom funnel. That's not necessarily the case. Although it does shrink a bit, there's still plenty of opportunity there to continue the momentum. So you can build that, you can use that time to build product awareness and still be able to convert. You can still use it as direct response. Um, just be sure to shift that messaging a little bit. Really ask your consumers what you want from them. And there's no reason not to include CTV in that. Yeah. And on that note, um, thinking about Q5, I love, I, I'm going to steal that uh, term or that um, phrase. But Q5, you know, looking at data, we're very, we're very data driven, right, in, in digital marketing, but oftentimes we, we have blind spots when it comes to data. Looking back at last year, if you were in the gym or fitness or diet industry, I don't know if diet is what they call it these days or nutrition, if you will, um, there are, there is a huge opportunity from the 25th of December to the first of the year. I have seen many, many clients in this in this industry like launch everything on January 1 and they go, oh God, we're so amazing. But what they miss, you could see this huge peak of research being done in those five days and uh, or six days. And it's very, very important that you are there and you're present when people are researching, especially again, if you're selling gym equipment, it's a no brainer. Um, but there's other complementary products that go along with um, that industry as well. So they definitely have a Q5 if you're in um, that kind of nutrition or resolution industry. Yeah, that is such a great point. Something that I've, I've always found is people really make the assumption that everybody just kind of turns off during that week and everybody just unplugs and they just go about their business and maybe they're working, maybe they're not. But I think a lot of people make the assumption, well, nobody's really shopping, nobody's really out. Um, when in reality, people are at home with their families, maybe they're watching TV, scrolling on their phones, maybe they need to, I think there's a that SNL sketch where it's like the Target parking lot, everybody just needs to get away for a little bit. Um, so people are out, they're going and they're, they're finding things to do. And that's when you really see that spike, both for wellness, nutrition, um, the resolution industry, as you called it, I love that name. Um, and that's really where we can see some of that, uh, some of that activity coming from. So take advantage of when people are online, because um, you're really going to be able to see that momentum going into the new year. So with that, I'm going to introduce Mountain. Um, Mountain is the world's first and only connected TV ad platform optimized for direct response marketing goals. Like I said, people are people are at home watching TV. They're getting caught up on their favorite shows, maybe that came out over the holiday season. People are engaging. They're they're online. So what can we do to reach them? Mountain has kind of entered the fold in this conversation. Um, we've been an established partner here for a while, but we're really kind of changing the game when it comes to connected TV. And we've turned CTV into the third scalable channel, performance channel, easily slotting beside your existing marketing strategies like paid search and paid social. This is really helping um, brands use the power of TV to drive measurable, measurable conversions, revenue, online, offline visits, and more. And many advertisers have used TV advertising to build distinctive and memorable brands that make them feel established, um, even when they are launching new products, new services, um, whatever it may be in the holiday season. And Mountain will complement these efforts, enabling them to use connected TV to produce lower funnel business outcomes through their prospecting and retargeting campaigns. Um, just as a little piece of advice, the best advertisers on Mountain tend to focus their time on perfecting their audience and creative strategies, just like our partners at REQ. Awesome. With perfecting those audience strategies, we're really excited um, to introduce Mountain Matched. With the holiday stakes being so high, historically, advertisers can't really rely on the traditional met methods of audience targeting. So, 
great example of this. Audiences like gender, age, dem just general demographics are known to waste impressions on prospects who are unlikely to buy your product or your service. Maybe you just can't rely on them like you used to because you're not able to track them. And I know that that frequently deters a lot of brands from testing TV, but Mountain Match is going to solve that. Mountain Match is the world, world's first keyword-based audience builder for connected TV and is a proprietary system that uses AI to score and categorize consumers in over 99% of U.S. households based on their shopping behavior, recent life events, and most relevant interest. And then builds, predictive, builds a predictive model of what they'll want to buy next. So really putting them in kind of in the crosshairs for a perfect target for the holiday season. The, two, the TLDR, it matches brands with consumers who will love them and are ready to take action. And the result is that Mountain delivers you customers and not just impressions. And we're proud to say that no other platform offers this type of technology for performance TV advertising. And since launching Mountain Match, Mountain Match with some of our customers, we've already seen it yield notable results. By building a single high-performing audience, they've already been able to generate, on average, six times more site traffic, two times more return on ad spend, and a two times lower CPA versus advertisers who are using traditional TV audiences only. Quick um, update on how it works. Generative AI recommends audience keywords that most fit your brand um, and what, your, what services and products you're providing. You can edit them just like you do on paid search or paid social. Mountain Match will then find people most likely to act when they see your ad, and you can forecast your campaign's engagement across three and 10 audiences, high, medium, and max reach, and plan your budget to maximize performance. You'll then get real-time keyword reporting that to inform optimizations and boost performance across other ad channels for what's known as the halo effect. And apologies. So I'm going to comment real quick on the halo effect, um, throw in a little REQ case study. So um, we work with the uh, brand Safalo, who owns multiple um, sunglass and glasses um, brands, one of which is Preve Revo. Um, we did a one month test with Mountain CTV and we used the Mountain Match. Um, and during that one month test, it's full funnel. So we did, um, you know, upper funnel customer acquisition as well as retargeting. We saw blended ROAS of a four X, um, which in my opinion, I, I was actually blown away because I thought that, you know, you're not going to see any results from upper funnel CTV. Like that's a misnomer. That's uh, definitely incorrect. Um, and after that, we paused it the following month and we just ran with the remarketing. Um, we wanted to see really how that um, halo effect works. During the month that we had full funnel, we saw 500,000 household views. So the, you're getting into someone, you're getting into these people's houses, like your specific customer watching the specific show that you know will align with your brand. Um, and then from that, we had over 60,000 verified visits. Um, and that volume when we paused remained very steady for the next 30 days. And so with just remarketing on, we were achieving a 9x. Um, and then it you know, slowly went down from there to a 6x. But we ultimately turned back on full funnel because we were very impressed with those results. Um, and then the Safalo brand has actually launched um, multiple other brands across the Mountain um, CTV program. So personal story there, anecdote about the success of CTV and Mountain Match all around. Love to hear it. Thank you for sharing it, Brooke. It's it's really exciting to see brands kind of implement those testing strategies to to try out a new channel and find that it really works for them. I mean, nine x return on ad spend on retargeting is fantastic, but to be able to see four x on a prospecting channel you're testing for the first time is is pretty fantastic. Um, kind of out of the gate and really exciting to hear. Um, and definitely something that as we're entering the holiday season, now's the perfect time to go ahead and, and start trying out new channels like CTV um, and find that you can reach your audience in, in a brand new way um, and really give rise to that halo effect. So let's go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about that and what Mountain kind of brings to the table there. But 
despite um, Connected TV's rise to prominence, other ad channels remain an important part of the marketing mix. But for all of their strengths, other channels have weaknesses. So we really understand that we're not working in a silo here. We all have to work together. Linear TV is not targetable and it's hard to measure in the same way that you would expect with paid search and paid social. Paid search is only gonna capture prospects actively searching for the for your product or your service. And paid social only appears in he heavy scroll environments along with a lot of different content. So relying on one or two of these channels alone caps the number of customers you can really reach and drive to your site for a conversion. But when CTV is added to the mix and it's targeting, targeting measurement and non-skippable messaging in a living room environment, it creates that halo effect that improves that ad impact across the board. It's why we recommend that when you have kind of these creative ad formats and these creative messages across your marketing mix, you really keep it consistent um, and you keep it across uh, multiple channels. So you're really reaching users wherever they may be. Now, speaking directly about Mountain's impact, after 90 days, Mountain Halo's, Mountain's Halo effect produces 9% stronger conversions for paid social and 22% stronger conversion rates for paid search. So advertisers who are adding CTV to their mix see better site traffic and conversions through a Halo effect that generates just in general more attention more qualified visits and more opportunities to convert on other channels. And best of all, CTV easily slots alongside those existing strategies easily and effortlessly. Love it. Okay, so speaking of other channels, um, wanted to throw in a few tidbits. Again, this could be literally its own webinar in itself and I could see a lot of awesome questions coming through um, the, the live chat there. Um, which we'll try to get to um, towards the end. But uh, thinking about creative, so at REQ, we uh, again, you know, we're we're full agency of record capabilities across the board as far as agile goes, um, and so we've seen some of these really fun creative formats coming um, trending as of late. So one uh, really strong converting um, creative is the fake podcast. So. Um, having you yourself or someone recorded, we have a whole studio that we have people and actresses that can do this, but really sitting in front of that um, camera or sitting in front of the camera with a mic and like a different background, it's really low budget production. And it's the same exact thing as an influencer talking in their kitchen, except it just adds so much credibility. Um, and it just makes it seem like this, this unique person that's speaking about a brand and talking about it is literally filming a podcast, which they're not. Um, so that's one amazing opportunity. The other one that I have seen online, I have absolutely love and adore is this, um, this is actually Chewy.com, but I've seen it done with like different um, brands that are um, trying to target parents where, oops, your your iPhone or your, or your, your phone just lands on the ground and like the dog splashes water on it. And then it goes and like goes through the entire website conversion process. Like, oh, it's when you're, you know, your dog splashes water and then it goes and it buys the Chewy.com and it comes to the door and it's just, it's it's so cute and witty and it's like, it gives everyone the opportunity to see like your entire website as well. Um, and then we love that if you Google this, um, then you, you should see this because number one, it bring, it actually tells people what to Google to find your brand. And that's something that you can track through your Google search trends or your keyword planner and your, and your different analytics. Um, but it makes it seem it's like such a good hook. You know, if you're Googling, you know, how to do X, Y, Z, then you really need this product. So um, just a couple of tidbits. Again, um, as, a, as a group here, we're going to send out um, creative, a, a, a doc on creative specs per channel. So when you actually are going to launch your new creatives, um, you can see, you can tell your creative team or your agency, like, here's exactly what the formats need to be. And that way you're kind of ahead of the curve and can um, get these launched and up, updated and testing um, ASAP. I gotta say, Brooke, that's probably one of the benefits of working with an agency. Most of the time they've already, they got, they got it on a roll just like REQ does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so actually the first 
before the one takeaway is, you know, higher REQ, but also run, run some mountain CTV, just so we're all being out there in the open. But anyway, so number one takeaway that we all want you to want you to leave with is consumers are shopping for the holidays, literally starting now, leverage what you learn from back to school. Even if you don't sell pencils, you can still be running ads and seeing lots of eyeballs on them and use all of that data to inform your strategy in your plan for the big cyber events. Um, also, you know, take a look at customer behavior. And again, those data points can afford, inform that feedback loop. Um, and then additionally, I think I posted on LinkedIn recently, but like in this day and age, there is absolutely no excuse to not be running CTV. It has never been easier. Literally, when you work with an agency partner, there's no minimum. So you don't even have to spend 300,000 to test it. You can spend 3,000. I don't recommend that, but I'm just saying there isn't any barriers to enter anymore for CTV. Um, and then lastly, use tools like Mountain Match um, and make sure that you know, you're hyper-focused on the audience that you know is going to convert um, while you're also open to and drawing in new audiences to your, your target plan. Um, and with those four key takeaways, uh, we really hope that you have an amazing cyber event this year and um, reach out to any of us or all of us um, to keep the discussion going. Um, but yeah, that's, I think we do have time for Q and A as well. Yes, we do. And thank you both. That was chock full of so many great tips and tricks for everybody. Um, and of course, as you might guess, we got a bunch of questions in. Um, I, I love this first one because it kind of goes into one of the most intriguing concepts that you both introduced, this idea of the Q5. So this viewer has, if you could elaborate just a little bit more on Q5 and why it's important to keep Evergreen ads running during that period. Yeah, fantastic question. Um, and definitely an intriguing uh, proposition for sure, given uh, kind of Q the differences between Q5 and Q1, just in, in the way that we would talk about them normally. Um, just a few statistics to get us started. I'm a data, um, a data nerd, um, so I am somebody who really likes to live in the numbers. That's something 16-year-old me would have never imagined me saying. Um, but I like to live in the numbers. Uh, according to um, Bank of America, 47% of consumers spend more than the actual value that's on a gift card. 49% of consumers use gift cards to try out new places they may not have ever been before. That may not necessarily happen before the holidays. That may not happen when they're shopping for, for gifts for the family or um, shopping on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. The perfect opportunity for that is going to be post-holiday. So making sure that you're getting ahead of that messaging, kind of prompting um, that that purchase or prompting that engagement. That prompt engagement is critical to developing that customer and really putting them on a path to either repurchase or purchase for the first time. Um, that's because a, lot, because a lot of that money could go unspent. Starbucks alone back in 2021 reported over $181 million in unspent gift cards. That is a lot of money being left on the table. So Q5 marketing and really preparing to kind of continue that holiday spend into Q5 is just as important as the holiday season itself. But great question though. Couldn't have said it we better have, myself. <laughs> we did have another question come in also about that kind of crucial end point of the timeline that Brooke shared at the beginning, this holiday period. Um, they ask, they say swapping out creative after the holidays makes sense, but producing holiday ads is expensive. Is there a trick to do this without breaking the bank? Yeah, it, it absolutely is expensive and tricky for brands to increase their ad creative just beyond that holiday or that holiday window. It is it, it's definitely difficult, especially when you kind of haven't pre-planned or you're trying to take advantage of maybe new products, new services that you're kind of trying to push out after that holiday season and budgets are tight. Um, some brands are actually increasing or reallocating funds from other channels to be able to pay for this creative or to be able to push out this creative on other channels. Um, often we find that brands are, are cutting budgets from paid search, paid social, even CTV in some cases, um, to be able to fund that brand new piece of creative to be able to afford that during Q5. 
Um, but Mountain believes that everyone should be on CTV, which is why we're helping solve these challenges with creative as a subscription, our creative accelerator programs, working with our agency partners and our brand uh, brands like QuickFrame. Um, QuickFrame helps alleviate these challenges by producing high impact quality, uh, affordable creative at scale for CTV, social and beyond through some of our fantastic agency partners and freelancers and contractors out in the world. And creative as a subscription gets you custom made high performing creative just for spending money on media. So that ad spend that you're already planning on spending, you can reallocate that back into those channels to see that performance while getting free creative. Um, the increased video demand can definitely be challenging um, transitioning out of those holidays, but it isn't just happening to your brand, it's happening to everyone. So really getting ahead of that pre-planning is gonna be a huge benefit there and taking advantage of channel offers, agency partnerships to get ahead of that is gonna be a huge benefit for you. It looks like we're we're just about out of time, but I feel like there's one more question we just have to get to because of the news last week that just kind of like rocked the world of marketing. This person zeroes right in on it. They are asking, you mentioned tracking a UTM configuration. How does your advice change with Google's recent announcement that they are in fact keeping browser cookies? And how does that play into attribution tracking for funnel, putting you guys really on the spot here? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so I think Google is up to something tricky here. Um, I'm not quite sure their their play. Maybe they don't have their ducks in a row yet to to have their you know um, non cookie cookie tracking. Um, but I'm I'm going to say that I still fully believe that advertisers should lean into first party data, and first party data is your own customer data. So. Every marketing uh, asset that you have, every marketing strategy and tactic has to have some lead gen potential, even if you're an e-commerce brand, because you need to continue to build that first party data in your marketable universe so that when you're about to launch this big promo for um, the cyber event 2024, you have a massive email um, list that you can then market to. So. Make sure, obviously, creative across the board is very similar with email marketing and all of your channel um, production. But I, even though cookies lists, cookies aren't leaving Google, I still think that you know, you're not going to get cookie tracking on iOS. Um, all of the platforms like Meta Ads, they're they're having everyone do these, you know, Advantage Plus type campaigns where you don't even get to see really what you're targeting necessarily. Um, and that's that data is not based off cookies. So they're pulling Visa data, they're pulling all kinds of other data for that. So even though Google announced that, um, I would say keep your tracking in order. Like I said, like I mentioned, tagging and UTM parameters, get your GA set up, you know, so that it's all ready to go and you can see every single channel and how um, each channel works together. But I, I don't know if I buy it that it's, you know, I, I, it is kind of ground shaking because we've been preparing for the cookie browser for five, six, seven, eight years now. Um, but, but yeah, I still think lean into first party data as well. Good advice, no matter what uh, Google decides to do in the end. Um, and unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. If you have a question that we didn't get to on the session, uh, we will be following up after the webinar. And thank you both, Brooke and Maggie, for bringing us this session. It was really, truly just full of so much great tactical advice. Um, if you want to rewatch it or perhaps share it with your colleagues, the link is here on the slide. Um, and please be sure to also join us on August 7th for our next webinar in the Think Tank series, which will be hosted by the image and video tech experts at Cloudinary. Um, a final reminder, if you're looking for more information and insights to help you bring your next big idea to life, visit the Think Tank Hub throughout the summer. We'll be curating new content, resources, and insights all summer long. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks for having us. This was a blast. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.